Welcome to the Kinjas Podcast. Here we will discuss dance, life, and whatever the f we want. Folks, welcome or welcome back to Kinjas Movement in the Shadows. We are your hosts, Ben and Anthony. And we got squad, squad, squad in the house today. We have dancer, choreographer, creative director. His creative direction includes Jackson Wang, Cirque du Soleil, The Karate Kid, The Musical, BTS, and Kinjas. We have brand new dad in the house. We have Ving Win hey, back hello. in the pod. Man, it sounds so cool when you say it. Hey, but that's you, bro. Ben <laughs> does also have a sexy voice, but yes, I think it is you. It's oh, just you. It's no, your. It's you have a cool resume. You you blend into the green room, dude. I just noticed you you Am like you very screen? perfectly blend in. Like you're wearing every <laughs> color that represents this room. Right, Chad, this can room. you just make me floating hands and arms? <laughs> you're <laughs> your own green screen. <laughs> oh damn! Bing screen. Bing oh, screen. I like socks. it. Dude, what's up, Bing? Oh, what's up, guys? It's um, been a long time. Yeah. This is your third time on the podcast is it yeah yeah well we had one that was like uh focused on like the creative process the second one was an ask me anything yeah i don't even know we were at the was. complex for that oh one. i remember that one yeah 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. it was like in the pandemic yeah it's the third it was, time this is yeah. the third time and you're in the new setup so uh welcome dude hey look at this thanks yeah, for having me guys yeah of course this is the first time with me though so this you know is the I mean? first time this is the first time we've talked ever um, like, this is anthony <laughs> what is no but mean? but really though we were just talking about this i have we haven't even been in the same space since last year so it's been at least three months at least if not like four months no, since I've it's been kicked it with you well my son is now five months old so it has to be more than six when was your oh baby gosh. the baby shower when was that baby shower was maybe august or july dude that might be the last time i saw you <laughs> dude, i just haven't same. seen honestly anyone. yeah you've dude. been gone though i don't think yeah, it's you because like gone. we've been like oh, well, terrible we, we saw you of, at head of, in the clouds for a, you know obviously you were in work mode but but that was even that, that was, that was still August. like August, yeah, or that was September August. or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's been a but he's time. been gone. He's been like out of the country. You've been out of the country. What have you been doing out of the country? I have been out of the country. <laughs> <laughs> well Why? Well Why, bro? Why? Um, <laughs> Welcome to the Kitchen Podcast. This is going to be a great one today. Sorry, no, I'm just. <laughs> I have to apologize because I haven't seen these guys in a really long time. So this is going to be more of like a catch up. Just chilling. Dude, no yes. disclaimers. Nobody's in the room, dude. All yeah, right, except for chat. Hey, just cheers, chat. Oh, okay, here we yeah, go. Yeah, see, we got to kick it off right. Cheers. Cheers, cheers everybody cheers, who's not cheers, in the room cheers, right now. Cheers to everybody cheers. out there. This is just catch yes. up. Dude, cheers. Mm. Can I do this? Cheers. So good to have an in-house <laughs> bartender. But for real, man, you've been out of the country. You've been traveling a lot. Doing. You're kind of bouncing back from like country to country back home for a bit and then out again yeah what you've been up new to, man? father oh my gosh <sighs> yeah. that's like a crazy it, thing so, so much has happened i don't even know where to start um well from pretty much september or october um i was out of the country working on jackson wang's tour magic man world tour yeah um but even before that i was already working on it since <laughs> june or july so that's pretty much taken a lot of, well, all of last year. Um, I, I actually feel like as of right now, I do feel like I'm in like a bit of an off season. Like I've just been chilling. Mm -hmm. I got back uh, like mid January. You've been so fathering. I've been yeah. fathering a child. Yes. Yep. It is so fun. We, we just, for the first time, got a chance to witness Ving just blah, 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 yeah. blah, 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 into, into Zendance, like gut, you know what I mean? Ving like, dad whoa. mode is pretty cool. Dad Ving is crazy. I love that. That's probably like the, what has been happening the most recently is just fatherhood. Mm. Like just focusing on that. So your right. son is five months five months old, five bro. months old man. yeah september since september 15th yeah how'd y'all come up with the name zendin oh good question um <clears throat> hmm 
So, <laughs> my, my wife and I, Gabri, she, uh, we always choose uh, a word for the year, like at the top of the year. You know how people do like yep. New Year's resolutions. Mm -hmm. We we choose a word to kind of like give us direction for the year. So every year we choose one, we kind of live by it, and it's kind of helped guide us without being so rigid to like a New Year's resolution. Um, I realize this is really long way, so I'm just going to keep going. This but, is great. Um, her word last year... Uh, or my word, let's start with that. My word last year was alignment. So anything that I pursued or whatever had to be aligned to my life, my 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 goals, my desires, my dreams, whatever that may be. And hers was peace. Mm. Hers was like protecting her peace for, for the year. So when we found out we were pregnant, she wanted to have something that kind of aligned with that word, aka Zen is a Japanese mean peace. But I think even more personally, her, her grandmother's name was Zenaida. Mm. And they called her Grandma Zenny. Mm. Oh, and wow. she, she passed a couple of years ago, but we wanted to kind of keep it in the family. And um, as a nickname, we call him Zenny or Zenny Boy. That's mm -hmm. cute. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, she really wanted to name him Zenny, but I was like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> as, a, as a man, you want to be able to have like a gravitas, like a mm -hmm. weight to your name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I was like, well, what about Zendin? And we can call Zen Zenny for short. Is that, mm. that Z-E-N-D-Y-N? Yeah, Zendin. Mm. That's, that's cool. Just that's a bit unique. more like, you know, hip-hop. Yeah. <laughs> He's hip-hop. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. So it's not hip-hop. I'm going to get canceled. <laughs> no, if, if you want to name, you name your kid hip-hop, you got to be like north, south, east, west, oh, right, blue, right. purple, green. Like it's, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like those are all like the names coming out. It's like, what's, what's your kid? his name blue <laughs> you know what i mean it's, My boy it's blue this is different now but you know zenden is, a, is yeah. a classy it's a clean it's a strong sounding but unique name i like it cool Thanks, sounds man. cool yeah, zenden velasquez newton that's his full name yeah Dang. Dope, dope, dope. yeah man so you just been back home for the past month just kind of going in daddy mode yeah um well i was just gone so much uh throughout the first couple months of his life, which was unfortunate. It was honestly really hard to, because I think all of us have <clears throat> experienced like traveling overseas for our careers or if we have to like teach and stuff. We've been doing that for 15 years, maybe mm -hmm. more. Time. Yeah. You know, so it becomes a part of our lifestyle. And it's, um, you just realize as you travel that you miss things that... <laughs> 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 that Wait, somehow what, was really we, just dropped no. that. No, it's on my phone yeah, on IG and it just came up. That was, <laughs> the re that was somehow perfect. Just right now. <laughs> that was somehow perfect. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, somehow fitting. <laughs> Should I jump back into it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, jump back into it. <laughs> uh, oh, anyway, so I was traveling a lot. And obviously, as you travel and as you get older, you kind of realize how much um, life you miss at home. Like from people that you love, or like mm. family or friends, and et cetera. And I think just having a kid just makes it way harder. You're just like, you know, because I think with Gabri, it's easy because, you know, she's self-sufficient and she's like independent. It's like... I love you. I'm going to go for a week. I'll be back, et cetera. And she can take care of herself. But when it comes to, you know, a, a child, mm -hmm. you know, who's just doesn't know why you're leaving or, you know, mm -hmm. just needs you as, um, I guess not biologically, like he's not feeding from like my breast or nothing. <laughs> hey, he needs you, man. You know what I mean? He, he, he needs he needs your nips, man. Straight <laughs> up. Hey, yeah. Maybe I should try it. No, and try. it's like not even a week, dude. You be gone for like a month. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's that's distance, especially yeah. when you talk about and I'm not saying this to make you feel bad. I'm just putting shit into like perspective. But like Zen is like five months old and you're gone yeah. for like a month. That's like twenty percent of his life so far. Like yeah, you're making me feel terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying I can only imagine, you know what yeah, I mean, yeah, like yeah. how that feels yeah. because, you know, man to man, like those are conversations that are starting to like flirt in my mind, you know what I mean? Me yeah. and Nina are all doing the same thing. We're talking mm -hmm. about like trying to like get mentally prepared on like trying to have children. Oh! Right? <laughs> yeah, no. It's, you it's, heard it first. It's, oh, it's, super, uh, it's super fun. So I have so many questions for you, which we're going to talk about on this oh, pod. That's, that's right real now. catch up. It's going to be a lot of like, oh my God, how do I be a man? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just no, but really though, it's like, it's like we've been talking about 
you know, getting mentally ready to think about starting to try, you know, doing all those disclaimers in your head that like humble you down to a place where you don't like have too many expectations so you can prepare for it in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Right. But then it's kind of like the most recent conversation we had was a little bit of a, a downer versus the excitement, the usual conversations of preparation. This one was like, what if I'm gone for like a month? Mm. yeah it's real yeah. they're real conversations yeah. you know what i mean mm-hmm. like what happens like how are, how are you gonna feel are you gonna be sad or are you gonna have the support that you need and stuff like that and it just mm-hmm. there's a whole different realm of that like how do you <laughs> you know navigate through that yeah, like yeah. W- with gabri and, and and just like as a new father like where are you because that's just a part of like our natural lives and right. straight up like you're going through it <laughs> god willing i will too eventually like what is that like what do you feel what do you think uh i don't think there is a, a really complete right answer like i'm still figuring it out myself and i think every person and every family is going to be different as um as you kind of go through it but we're we're still figuring it out and i think we've made um huge decisions to kind of support ourselves as a family and uh, even our like mental spaces as individuals too, or even like our marriage. I think that's a whole different thing too, as you know, someone who's just newly married. It's just so many things to uh, consider, but you know, I think this time right now, as I'm kind of like in my off season, I've just have had the chance to really just be with him like all the time, like see him grow up. And um, one of the big, decisions that we had to make which is another life thing so i'm kind of jumping through hurdles we'll get back to jackson i promise it's all good you know i'm gonna talk about jackson bro (laughs) we're talking about zandon come on man (laughs) one of our big decisions was um which not a lot of people actually know surprisingly so i guess it's gonna be official but we don't live in la anymore we yeah whoa you guys already know but (laughs) Uh, we we decided to buy a house in san diego so we live in oceanside congratulations yeah that's amazing freaking you know expensive but (laughs) for longevity's sake you know having a kid makes you think not even just like one step ahead but you have to think 10 Mm. 15 20 like where am i going to be 5 Mm -hmm. 10 20 years etc and what kind of life do we want to Uh, create for our son you know so um we moved down to san diego because my my family's down there we have like a lot of health and um just trying to figure out the new ways in which to even just make a living you know like as (laughs) someone who's 34 about to be 35 this year i think our, our natural transition from you know i guess our younger years in our 20s like being dancers or performers or you know, choreographers, et cetera, how does that manifest and how does that culminate into something that can really strive for longevity or go past our physical sense to provide something through our experience or things like that, you know? So those are just some of the things I just think about Mm. every day, bro, you know? (laughs) Dude, I almost almost want to like turn back and go back in time a little bit to, Mm -hmm. to get some like where you were at mentally and stuff because um obviously in the present it's like whoa like you know you you've accomplished uh, all these cool things that ben just introed out you know what i mean um you have a kid you just moved you know uh, out of la and bought a house and stuff um but to make it like uh more relatable to where like you know like i said where where even i'm at you know uh and, and where it can go just back to that friend to friend conversation like one what was like the the thoughts that you had when you found out Gabby was pregnant and then also just straight up in the niche world the niche world that we're in like as an artist and as a creator like what in your mentality like started changing i know that you know i can only imagine like the stories i hear again since i haven't walked down that path second you know that your life isn't your own anymore and you're providing for somebody else yeah you didn't know you had like a seventh gear that you can kick into and I, I no doubt saw some of that, but I would love yeah. for you to like kind of walk us through like where you were at mentally, how you were feeling, things that you feel like you needed to do for your own life to get prepared for it, all that stuff. Yeah. Wow. No, that's a great question. I think um, <clears throat> the moment we found out that we were pregnant was late December 2021. And I was actually on the night I found out. I was actually with y'all. <laughs> we were we were drinking at, <laughs> at a sushi bar <laughs> at Kombu Sushi. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, that was the night. That was the night. Whoa. So when Lee J came up and all that, that yeah. was the night. So we were 
obviously having a good time and like you know sharing where our lives are at we went to the bar to kind of talk about all the stuff that you were doing in crypto mike was getting into like screenwriting etc that was the night so that night yeah <laughs> the night i got back it was late like i we were uh, so it was after was you didn't know at that no, time no oh, no sh- hell no <laughs> he's like i wouldn't have even <laughs> showed up have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i walked to the apartment and it's like dark i was like okay what the heck and uh, they get the bathroom light was on. You kind of just see like the bathroom light around the door, and I just kind of like opened it. And Gabri kind of just turns around. You could see her eyes are kind of red, and she kind of just shows me the pregnancy test. I saw that video, so she was already like, yeah, she had her her, her yeah, yeah. phone ready to go. <laughs> yeah, well, she <laughs> wow, she, she was recording because at the time we were already trying, you know. Just, yeah. Uh, well, uh, I don't even know how to explain it. We weren't not not trying. It was just. Yeah, you know whatever. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, that's on video. You could find it online. How like <laughs> you could see it in my face. I was shocked, bro. Like I didn't even know how to take it in. Like I think the feeling, God, it's so hard to describe because it's one, you're overjoyed. You're like so happy, but at the same time, the end of the spectrum, you're fucking terrified, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I can. Yeah, you can. Fuck, fuck, fuck. But it's okay. <laughs> Oh, fa, okay. <laughs> fa, fa, fa. Uh, that's what we're actually saying. I was just terrified, you know, because I think that that automatically, you're not just a partner. You're now like the head of your household. You're like, mm. man, that's going to provide for your family. And like, we're living in this small apartment. And, you know, I, I think as artists too, it's a little scary because we come to the realization of like, dang, where's my next paycheck coming from? How do I get him into school? How do I, this is all at once. Like, mm-hmm. You know, you're just sitting there just like You went from next paycheck to how do I get him into school? (laughs) No, for reals, bro. Like even now, like we think about like, (laughs) like, oh man, it's going to be crazy when he leaves the house, you know? (laughs) 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 You're just thinking that far ahead. But I think it's just natural because, you know, this human being is going to be with us, you know, forever. Mm -hmm. So I think that initial feeling kind of just changes the gears in your mind of um, not just I guess I guess the best way to put it is not just live for yourself anymore. And I think that uh, that may sound sad, but I feel my purpose is just so much bigger than me now. So like mm-hmm. when I'm, you know, looking to do things or or you know dream of bigger ambitions, my family is always like at the forefront of my mind. Now. Mm-hmm. Like how can I provide for them, but also how can I be there for them? You know, and if it, what does that mean to um, you know, balance how I should be away or how I should be here. And I think these are all just natural things that we had to, you know, um, go through and obstacles. I mean, paling in comparison to the nine months that <laughs> your lady is pregnant. Yeah. Like the learning curve, bro, is crazy. It's just so much um, that you're taking on every day to just consume like, okay, what happens if this happens? Oh, what do I do with this? Like, how does it even work? Like all these things. Hmm. It's just like every day is a new uh, learning experience. Even now, you know, like five months, um, into his life, we're thinking about <clears throat> what's he going to be like at a year old too? Like, when should he do this, et cetera? It's just constant, um, learning, which is beautiful all, all in the journey. And I've mm-hmm. heard from other parents and other people just like enjoy it now, which we're doing to the best of our ability, you know? Right. You know, I, I, I've known you for a really long time and, um, dude, I, I remember formality being dude. <laughs> so like seeing, 14 year old, yeah, yeah seeing dude. you from there to seeing the man you are now, dang, 20 years then 20 it's, years, it's been like 20 years. Yeah. And, um, you know, my when I first got down with Kinjas too, that was probably more of the time that I actually like got to know you. Even though we were on SGVM for a, a a short little blip, I really felt like I got to know you during our our time here in Kinjas. And I've seen even the evolution of Ving from like Kinjas, <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like you know, from our very first crusade to you know, present day, and um, I think something. That- <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. See, that, there's there's a lot of context there. I just, for some reason, images popped up. I, I me too. Know it was very sentimental. Well, you had me at SGBM, and then the no. second you went to our no, first crusade, but, I was like, oh, but yeah, see, you just imagine but, me in my boxers on the table, like. <laughs> ah! 
<laughs> I, I, I do said it. I do <laughs> remember that. <laughs> that was definitely the image yeah. I went in my head. Yeah, that was the image in my good, head too. Hey, we, had, we, we had great times. Life, we had man. a great time. Yeah. And and you know <laughs> from from things like those times to um and I've seen your growth um as a dancer, as a mover, as a creator, as a director, and then I just saw this kind of like just like this burst of like, yeah, Ving's a man now, dude. And like, and and I hear I hear uh, people say that um, when you are ready for growth or like when you're ready for the next thing in your life, you get married. And then when you're ready for your next, next thing in your life of growth, you have a child. Oh, wow. And so like, um, was there a conscious time for you and and again crusade ving was dope like everybody (laughs) enjoyed that but was there a conscious moment for you and maybe there wasn't i don't know that's why i'm asking the question yeah was there a conscious moment for you where you were like i think i'm ready for like that next chapter or that i'm ready to grow into my new man was there anything was there ever a time like that for you that's a great question. Wow, guys. Great question. Yeah, man. You inspire me, dude. <laughs> I think we've, I mean, even to touch on what you said before, too, I think we've gone through just so much life. And I've seen very young iterations of Anthony, too, and very young iterations of Ben. <laughs> we've just gone through a lot of life together. Um, and to kind of just maybe touch on on that of, am I ready for this next chapter? I don't know if it was... I don't know if it was conscious or not. I think that marriage is is different because it, it, in the sense, uh, I guess it's not so much an inward of like, I'm ready to take my, my next step, so I'm going to get married, but more so I'm ready to take on my life with this person because we are going to make our, each other better. You know, mm. we're going to um, elevate together. You make me better. I make you better and it's like kind of that team partnership that you that you uh, have clarity on and i think that's probably the best word to describe at least in this moment uh gabri and i she got she brought me so much clarity and i think that having a partner to have a sounding board or to have really meaningful intentional purposeful conversations and pursuing your life together it allowed like much more clarity um so i don't know if that was conscious or not but I felt a shift for sure, like in that phase of marriage. And then (laughs) called the pandemic. I don't even know. But I think the pandemic, because we were just locked inside, we're just like, man, what's the next thing? You know, (laughs) of just Mm -hmm. like life. Because I think um, up to that point, you know, we were just doing so much in our lives, traveling around the world, doing all these great and amazing things. Um, but then when the world stopped, we kind of just questioned like, what's like really important to us and like, Mm. what, what do we want out of all these things that are all fabulous and they're all great in its own right of fulfilling ourselves with things that are, uh, dream fulfilling or, you know, goal accomplishing, but what's going to bring us true, uh, like soul fulfillment, you know? And I think for us, it was like, it was always in the books, but like, I think we're ready to start a family, mm. you know, and ready is such like a loose term because even as you're thinking about it, and you will be, but you won't be for sure. at all. For sure. <laughs> I was actually going to ask you, uh, which obviously is like subjective and, and uh, there's no scale to this, but like, uh-huh. like on a scale of like one to 10, 10 being like absolutely ready and uh-huh. zero or one being not, where were you mentally in your mind? Like number wise, how ready were you? And then, what was the actual number once it was real? <laughs> because that's that's where I'm at. I I, I know yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. ready. I know I've seen it. I've seen my sister. I've seen Nina's sister. I've seen it in my life. Yeah, I yeah, know yeah. I'm not ready. But like at the same time. There's only so much you think you can prep for. Totally. You know what I'm saying? So like you no matter what, it's like even though you're unready, you're at the the ready to be unready place. Mm. You yeah, know yeah. What I mean? No, that's actually probably the perfect way to put it. It's just like, I'm ready, 
but I don't, I don't know what I'm getting into, but I'm ready for it. You know? Yeah. That's mm. the <laughs> only thing I kind of feel, but that's why I'm asking yeah, you. Like, yeah, yeah. where were you? I felt like I was at an eight of like, oh, I'm ready. You know, like, let's do this. And when we're in it, in terms of ready, but this is all, I don't know, it's a tricky question because I think you get ready, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think yeah, that's yeah. perhaps maybe even a bigger philosophy too of, of other things, but in terms of like where I actually was, I don't know, like a two. <laughs> but, <laughs> Shit, but I'm you, a one then. <laughs> <laughs> but you learn, you know, and I think maybe the bigger thing to jump into, at least for me as a person to even taking on big, bigger jobs or, you know, creative direction is mm-hmm. like, um, you will be mentally ready. Like, I'm ready for this. Like, I'm going to take it on. And I think having the confidence to do that um, kind of ejects you into those spaces where it allows you to be. But uh, I'm a big believer in just doing, you know, and just mm-hmm. um, I think that you can prepare yourself enough <clears throat> for anything. But if you've never treaded or gone there before, no, like undoubtedly you will learn, you know, and you mm. will get ready for it. And um, I think that's what it was like for for us as we keep continuing on as parents is that we're continuing to learn and 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 prepare and do the best that we can really as parents. I think that's if you have the willingness to do it, like and the and like the strength to really press through, you're ready. I feel like you know, and even with bigger, uh, let's say, creative direction direction roles or like choreography roles. Or, you know, anyone who's even seeing, um, I guess, dancers who are hearing this or are seeing this is like, when will I know I'll be ready? And I've had so many conversations with people, God, countless, with people who who never take the leap because they never felt that they're ready. Mm. But I think for me, you know, especially in like the younger generation, I'm like, you have all the tools that you have to get there like you have this you have this you have the resources you have the mentorship if you ask for it and ultimately it's just like what's holding you back and almost always it's like i don't know i'm scared Mm. or like i don't feel ready you know and um sadly i've seen people who have never taken the leap to do that and i guess that potential uh space in which they could have elevated to is kind of just it becomes a pipe dream, you know? Mm. So I guess for anyone who's even listening um, and who just feels like they want to take the next step into pursuing the next thing, prepare yourself up to a point, but at some point the the work has to become application, you know, and it mm-hmm. has to become, I'm going to do it or, and just going for it. Because you will fail. You will learn. You will make mistakes, but I think that's essential to how we grow, you know, as human right. beings. I love that, man. Um, as you're talking about <clears throat> that preparedness, there's only so much that you even think you can be prepared for because you can't prepare for something that you've never experienced. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? Like if you've never run a marathon, you could, you know, do your get your your gear get your shoes right you know get like your gels and your salt tablets and like (laughs) watch videos but you'll never really know until you go and run that marathon and then you feel what it feels like Mm -hmm. and then you like learn the like okay shoot i should have not worn this extra layer and you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> i should be wearing clothes that are, you just don't know like that personal experience. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, you lost me at gels and salt yeah, and tablets salt like, Whoa. Like, and, and that's the thing I, I i asked my friend who does like these marathons and iron mans and he's like yeah make sure you have this make sure you have that i'm like cool cool go got it but until i did it you know, I didn't know how my my ankles were going to feel at mile eight. You know what I'm saying? Like, you yeah, just yeah. don't know until you do it. Totally. And then I finished it, you know, and, and like and then now I know, OK, there were there are things that I learned only through experiencing the real thing. Totally. And um, when it comes to, let's say, yeah, um, career related things. Right. Like as you're talking about of, oh, man, I don't know if I'm ready to choreograph. I'm ready to be a creative director. And, you know, the getting ready part for it is like, are you training? Are you, are you, do you have mentors? 
Um, are you studying stuff? Like mm-hmm. you can have all that stuff to kind of be doing your homework, but until mm-hmm. you do it and actually be on the job and then mm-hmm. dealing with the personalities and and even your own physical, how you feel as you're doing it to your mental, like, are you, you know, mentally healthy? Are you getting your rest? Like, you don't know any of that until you just do it. Yeah. Um, there's this quote that I love and I this is something I, I, I learned recently. Um, the quote is, um, Life takes off on the other side of fear. So you until posted that on your IG story, I posted like that on my ago. IG story yesterday. <laughs> oh, yesterday. Yeah, the and observant. <laughs> and, and yeah. the thing with that, I mean, this is so applicable to what we're talking yeah, absolutely. about. Yeah, like until that. you step into the thing that is scary, you will never know that like life really can start at that point when you like step into those things that um that scare you. But of course, there is as we're talking about getting ready, being prepared, I think it would be foolish to just like, yeah, go run a marathon without ever training. <laughs> like totally, that, totally. That'd be pretty dumb. You yeah, know, yeah, I mean, yeah. people have done it, but it's not the best way to do it. So doing your homework and doing whatever you can to get to the point where you think like, all right, I think I've done all my prep work. Yeah. Now the real test is the application. Am I Am I willing to step into it? at the fear, even though the fear is there and it's present, am I still willing to do it? And you know, when we think about it, you know, people talk about, oh, fear of what? Fear of failure, fear of judgment, fear of disappointing. Yeah, yeah, that's all legit, you know, but you said it, that that failure equates to learning, Mm -hmm. should you choose to look at it that way. Totally. Failure isn't just like, oh man, I suck, I should just give up. (laughs) Like, you could view it that way, or it's like, oh man, I learned, a bunch of what not to do's. Mm -hmm. And so the next time I do it, I'm going to have all that stuff covered and then I'm going to be better the next time. So I think even as you're talking about the way that you, you kind of stepped into your own view of like, yeah, I think I'm ready for this next chapter. Like even marriage, you weren't like, oh yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm very consciously ready for this new growth. It's just like, no, I'm, I'm going to keep living my life, but this person that I'm with, Mm -hmm. I think will make my life better and I think I'll make her life better mm-hmm. by doing it together. And that was probably just that one extra step towards growth that you needed to recognize. And then you learn what was on the other side of marriage. Then yeah. it's like, oh shoot, are we ready to have kids? I don't know. I'm like an eight, <laughs> but maybe I'm a two. <laughs> like Maybe we, I'm a one. <laughs> and then we just went for it. And it's yeah. like, well, time to get to that, you know, yeah, get to yeah. that 10, you know, like we just have to do it. And like, I think, there's so much to um, to like glean off of that sort of wisdom that I think that you're talking about is oh, cool. just just go for it. Yeah, you no, know what totally. I mean because you're gonna learn. There's no other way but to learn. Yeah, and I think something that you said too even just touches on <coughs> that fear that people run into or feel fear of failure. Like oh, I messed up. Uh, I think that kind of brings people down. Like maybe I shouldn't even be here. But you know, like like in terms of like a picture point of where that is like oh maybe i shouldn't even be here they're like at the point of the at the mountain you know it's like oh if you keep going it's good like you're there Mm -hmm. you know and um there's actually a quote i thought you were gonna say it (laughs) but there's another (laughs) quote um that i I, i'm not butchering it but it's i forget who says it but it's the only thing a man can do is to be ready for when his time comes and i think that that i've kind of lived by that is to just always continuously be ready Um, in every sense of the word. You can prepare yourself, like you said, like as much as you can. But at one point, you just do. Mm -hmm. And um, if I can encourage anyone even listening to is to really embrace the failure and like really uh, fall in love with the process of having to fall and fail. (laughs) That sounds like a big downer, but honestly, that's where the growth comes from, you Mm -hmm. know, is where you come out better. Your your skin is thicker. You know, you could run farther. You could do so many more things when you fall in love with the process. Mm. So I think as a Ving fan, people could be like, oh, but I've never seen Ving fail. He's always killing it. Right. Like, but that is, that's what it could look like. You know, I think when you follow people on social media, they don't really post the stuff that they like failed at, <laughs> you know, true. they, they post the stuff that are their successes and their highlights of like, Oh, look at me I'm on stage. I'm, I'm traveling and doing all this stuff. Yeah. Um, is there a moment for you where you felt like, and if you're willing to be um, a bit vulnerable here, yeah, yeah. Is there, is there, or was there a time 
um, that you felt like, man, that was that was a tough learning lesson that I had to just go through and just let it teach me whatever it was going to teach me? Man, so many, bro. <laughs> I don't know about I mean, it doesn't have to be the grand life changing thing, but even like, let's just say even in like the your creative process or the way that you've maybe thought your your career was going to go and then maybe it didn't quite like was there ever any ever anything sure. like that i mean to be honest I, i'm i'm racking my brain cuz i'm also like there's so many because i feel like everything i take on and we are our biggest critics right like when you look at something you're like damn that was whack i could do that better but someone else could be like that was the best thing i've ever seen you <laughs> yeah, know yeah. but it's the self uh self observation the self criticism that allows um, not to beat ourselves down, but oh, I could do better. Or like, ooh, that could have been different. Uh, I find it in everything I do. Like even stuff that I post online or, or whatever, choreography jobs that I take on or performances that we've done. She's like, oh, I can't watch that because that, <laughs> you know, that like one thing I, I wanted to do a lot better. And there's always that. So I don't know if there's a particular descriptive experience, but um, I fail all the time, man. Like even... You know, uh, as we've worked on Jackson's show, it's amazing. Like, it's a great show. I'm very proud of it. But there is even things in there I'm like, ooh, I could have done that better. And it's perhaps not even anything <laughs> physically seen. It's just like, oh, I should have talked to that person like this. Or like, ooh, I shouldn't have said that. Or, you know, I think that um, when you're in a position of creative direction, it's not just the product, but it's the process. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I'm a, such a huge believer in the creative process and whatever comes out as a show is the cherry on top for me personally. Um, it's just finding those things that like, mm, okay, I could have reined in my temper or I could have, you know, stood for this idea more, you know, things where I'm like, that would have worked. And it's like, damn, I shouldn't have changed my mind or I like, shouldn't have let this person like change my mind, mm. et cetera, things like that. They're very, very minute, not, not anything that people would be so um, apparent to see, but it happens every day, man. I'm, I'm a constant learning machine. It's mm -hmm. uh, uh, as as Bruce Lee says, is be water, my friend, right? Mm -hmm. It's being malleable to everything that comes through and being able to be adaptable and, you know, work your way through those mm -hmm. things. You know, that's really cool because I, I, even as like you're you're talking about in your own head <clears throat> the 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 things that you thought could have be could have been done better. Whereas someone else who's observing, like, I thought that was great. But like, I'm sure everybody, the the most talented person that you look up to will probably say exactly what you said. I For could sure. have done that better. But you're like, I thought that was a great performance or I thought that was a great decision. And you're <laughs> yeah. just in their minds like, no, nah, I could. So if 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 we just accept that as the norm, like there is not a single I'm I mean, I'm sure there are people out there like, no, nah, I'm perfect. We're like, well, Good luck. <laughs> like, but most people will be like, I appreciate that, but I, it, it could have been done better. I think what that does is, one, it never satiates your appetite for growth because mm -hmm. you're always going to be like, if, the, if I could have done that better, that means I'm going to try harder next time. Mm -hmm. And you'll continue to grow in that way. And then it also keeps you, yeah, like on that same token, keeps you humble, right? Because you always know like there's always room to be better. Even even if it's like you said, not necessarily the move or the execution of of something, but just the way that you felt like you could have talked to somebody, or you could have been more patient, or you could have yeah been a little bit more mm. um, you know assertive in some way. There's always something, and I think that's why like the greatest achievers and artists and creators um, continue to break their own boundaries and barriers because they're probably always going to be here be like there's always something that could be improved you, you know what's interesting though mm -hmm. um and just for the sake of fun conversation i feel like what a lot of people maybe don't touch on is uh, and again this is my observation my understanding is i i think that it's more of a tightrope act it's like a balancing act because i think that some of the greatest fuck greatest like just people in general like you know what i mean it's like yes you have to be able to like understand and humble yourself and see what you can work on. Know that there's always room to grow, 
um, have a, a constant student mentality so that you can constantly uh, evolve as an individual and get to the next tier. I think that I feel like that's a very um, uh, for the sake of simple terms, like that's like a, a constant thing that I feel like a lot of people talk about. But maybe you could shed some light on this too, Ving, if, if you feel this way. But mm -hmm. maybe something that people don't often talk about is the other side of that reflection that is, I think, just as important to uh, understand the balance between. And I call it a tightrope because I also believe that only crazy people are capable of doing crazy things. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think that like uh, all the innovative geniuses, artists, scientists, etc. I'm not saying they're like arrogant assholes by any mean, but I genuinely believe that like if somebody's gonna go out there and change the world, they have to be crazy mm -hmm. enough to in in some way, shape, or form believe right. mm -hmm. that they're yeah. capable of changing the world, and that's a hard thing to also hold on to on your shoulders, right? Like totally. truly, like one, like e e even um, let's put real world example, like being a creative director for like Jackson Shore or something. Mm -hmm. Ving's also got to be the guy who can walk into a room. And anybody who's like looking up to the person who's holding that responsibility, they have to, in this unwavering way, just know <laughs> that he's got the answer. Even if he doesn't have the answer, mm -hmm. he's got to, he's the guy with the answer. Right. And and there's, you know, like, feel free to um, just True. chime in on how you perceive a little bit of like, uh, and again, my analogy is something like a tightrope, because, you know, being in that position too, it's like, on the one hand, you're the you're the last stop for answers, so you got to have one, even if you don't have one. Sure. On the other hand, you're also like your own worst critic, mm -hmm. and you also know your your faults that people might not see and where you want to improve. And like, how do you balance that for yourself? Mm. Oh, good question. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's I don't know if tightrope is. Perhaps. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm saying. No, that's no, my it's, my it's totally, analogy in my head. But. I hear what you're saying though, because I think that maybe this. Uh, or even just to agree from what you were saying before of like the craziest people make the craziest ideas. I totally agree to that. I think uh, as a creative, big risk is high reward. Mm -hmm. But then big risk is also big risk. Like you could also be like, totally. oh, that was the most terrible idea <laughs> we've done, which, you know, I, I'm sure we all have uh, that in our in our own workings as well. Yeah, hashtag changes. Kanye. Just feel free to look at his entire <laughs> journey. Like you see both. Oh, you know what I mean? I was gonna like, say Kinja. Oh like, yeah, Kinja is like, like, great. Kinja's like Kanye. Ooh, cut no, that no, out. No, no, no. Cut that out. Like Leave shows that where we look back, we're like, whoa, what were we thinking? You know? But, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. But <laughs> but it was because in the spirit of innovativeness, we're like we have to do things that people have never seen before, and I think that's the wheel that continues to create the novelty experience as artists mm. right and creating new works for the world um even just to go back to what you're saying in those um let's say in the particular example of like walking into a room everyone's looking at you for an answer i think that also kind of goes semi hand in hand too with the idea of preparedness and there's this like um I always refer to this book. I, re I referred to it last time too. It's uh, called The 21 Laws of Leadership by John oh, yeah, C. Maxwell. Oh, yeah, yeah. Maxwell, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you've read it? Uh huh. Amazing. It's one of my favorite the one books. With the green and the black, like double bar front type thing. I don't know. I ripped off the cover. So. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's just Why black. Did you rip off the cover? <laughs> no, truthfully, okay, side tangent is because Gabri hates those covers and she color codes my book. So I'm just like, I don't know how to find it anymore because all the covers are gone. <laughs> what? <the? laughs> but sure, I believe you. I believe oh, you. Oh, God. Uh, I just made that up. Right. <laughs> it's, it's one of my favorite books because there's an analogy of, uh, I mean, it, the whole thing's about leadership. And. You know, every time I'm pitching an idea or I'm in a room or I'm talking to certain departments about what the lighting should be, what the sound should be, what the costume should feel like, uh, or even talking to Jackson about like, this is the story pitch, blah, 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 blah. It's because I'm confident that I've spent the most time on it. Like, mm. I like in, in the room, like no one has worked harder on this project than I have. Like, I know all the answers because I'm literally day and night, like working on this project. And, <clears throat> and that was how it was uh <laughs> even leading up to my son's birth it was just like day and night like working on this project so that we could get it going because at, at some point i think as a leader you you trust your team you know and you trust the people that you've appointed to it and you're like here's the vision here's everything is the context and take it away and then as like a at least 
in my personal experience as a creative director, all you need to do now is just rein in the ideas and keep mm-hmm. it going until you finish and cross the line. But up to that point, to your to your to your point is like, yeah, you just have to know, you know. And I think that it's not. Uh, I guess it's not about faking it. I think it's just more so believing it. And I think that takes so much mental wrangling of like, God, is this the right idea? Or like, are we doing the right thing? But um, I think at the end of the day, if you believe in something so strongly, um, if you don't believe it, no one else will. Totally. Mm. So walking in like Mm. rooms like that, that's just kind of the approach of... I guess perhaps in the in the tightrope of like is self doubt yet like no like <laughs> this is the direction you know and mm-hmm. so many things can waver on that tightrope. I'm just going off your analogy. Yeah, now. <laughs> it is a tightrope. <laughs> <laughs> At first it wasn't, but now it is. <laughs> is it? It is. It. <laughs> and having that confidence with you know so many things thrown left and right at you is um, just knowing your direction mm. and finishing it strong. You know? How do you how do you make decisions? Like how how can you become decisive? Because I think um, in any life scenario, we we're faced with decisions, but especially when it comes to like an artistic choice or like a career path, um, I think we all have that. We we come to so many crossroads. We're like, I don't know. Do I go this way or do I go this way? Is it do I choose this move or do I choose that move? Do I pick this song or, that? you know what I'm saying? Like we have yeah. so many decisions that we need to make. And then yeah. the whole analysis paralysis, we think ourselves to death and we don't make any decision and we don't do, do anything. Yeah, totally. Um, how, how do you uh, make your decisions when you're unsure? No, I love that question. Cause I think that that even just goes hand in hand to just trial and error. <laughs> like I've, I've been choreographing since I was 14. Like I had, that was my first thing to dance when I stepped into it. Like I had no one to dance with. So I'm like, I'm going to become one of my own dance moves, you know? <laughs> and like, I just chose like a random, it was like a baby face song or something like that. And um, I was doing martial arts at the time. So I'd just be in like full gi outside, just like dancing. <laughs> dancing a baby face <laughs> in a martial arts gi. <laughs> yeah. That's we just need a reference for this. <laughs> Because I, I took taekwondo when I was younger, mm-hmm. and I think that was my first introduction into like learning my body. And mm-hmm. you have to learn forms for sure. Right, right, right. Yeah, you're, like, hada, hada, yeah. hada. you're like, okay, this is just, yep. yeah, you're just memorizing moves. So, um, doing it to music or even just transforming it to make a dance, I was like, oh, this is fun. Um, but anyway, I, to go back to your question, I think it's just a matter of trial and error sometimes when you don't know like, oh, do I choose this move or this move? I think all it comes down to, especially because the root of it is as we're artists and we're ex- expressionists. Expressionists. Sure. Yeah. 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 Expressionists that you just kind of dig deep inside to like what feels the best or like what is right to me, you know? And, and I think that comes with the most fulfillment. And as you exercise these things, you discover ooh, that was not a good idea. Or like, maybe I should do something else next time. But that's that trial and error. Mm -hmm. And you were refined by your craft by doing over and over again. Mm. You know, Mm -hmm. and I think that that, in a sense, for I guess anyone out there again who's like listening, is refining your voice, refining your taste, refining your your vision into something. Um, I think it just takes time and it takes practice just with anything. I think tale as old as time, right? It's just time and practice and do something. I, I like mm. the way that you say like refining your voice and refining your taste because especially nationally we're talking about like creative spaces too sure. yeah. and it's like you I think uh, even myself you can get kind of drowned by trying to figure out the right answer mm. but like when you're talking about creative decisions like if it's your voice and your taste, chances are you're in that position because somebody chose you for your voice and your taste. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if you mm-hmm. just trust and, and and fall on your <clears throat> refined voice and taste, that's probably the appropriate answer. Right. You could still be wrong and fail or the client might not like it or the artist or the project or whatever it is you're working on. But the point was that like you've been investing in yourself and everything that you've done that got you that opportunity at that point or put you in that position chances are it's your same voice and taste that got you there that is what is needed to mm. progress you know what i mean yeah it's just more refined versus just and again I, I have to continue to admit like i'm guilty of this too right a lot of times with creative work you're given an assignment 
And it's like sometimes <laughs> you like uh, me personally, I feel like in the last couple of years, I've gotten really good at handling the assignment. And I think the inverse is it's like I feel like I've lost a lot of my own taste and voice sometimes. And I got to retract, mm-hmm. you know, and, and go back to like the drawing board to like find something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So mm-hmm. so I, I just like the way that you said specifically like refined voices or refining your taste through trial and error. Word. No, I love that. Mm. And I'd love to add on to that because I, I feel like even what you just even touched up on is like becoming lost in, let's say, the assignment or things that, um, let's say, the client asks for or whatever. Uh, I even went, we go through that all the time. You yeah, know what I mean? And, totally. and I think that there was a period in time in which I gave myself fully to the idea and the um, vision of others without consulting myself. And I think that that... <clears throat> Like you're producing things, but you feel nothing about it, you know? And, and I think that that once you start receiving success or failure from it, you don't know how to uh, regurgitate it again because it's not based on anything, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think that that, that helped me to kind of just be more um, sturdy in the footing of like, no, I think I want to do this, you know? And whether the client <laughs> likes it or not, based on their their preference sometimes they love it sometimes they hate it but at least at the end of the day when i put my head on the pillow i'm like i loved it <laughs> you, yeah, sleep. Yeah, you know yeah, what i mean sure. so and i think that's the voice that matters because that's what you're going to carry through your life every day yeah know? that's really good i mean just going off of what you were saying and like you got to trust that if they asked you to do it they want you Totally. Like, 100. give me ants voice, ants ideas, ants movements, and and that goes for anybody. Like, if you were if you were asked to be this person or participate in this event or project, you have to trust that they want you and what you have to offer. Sure, you're gonna have whatever different opinions, and you sure. know the clients yeah, are always yeah. gonna throw stuff. But like, you yeah. gotta learn how to be malleable. But mm-hmm. also trust, like, hey, this is this is me. You brought me on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, just trusting that, like, you're there for a reason, and totally. that they asked you specific when they could have asked anybody else, you know. Totally. So, Ving, I mean, we definitely don't want to glaze over the fact that you just came off of a massive project with Jackson. Uh, we we talked about it a little bit, but yeah. um, I mean, that was a big, big thing. Yeah. Um, feel free to unpack that for us. Well, obviously, Kinjas has been working with Jackson for a while, since like 2018, 17, 16? Something like that. On yeah. Hot Blood Dance Crew. So we've all kind of been acquainted, yep. acquainted for, for a while. But he hit me up um, about doing like a music video at first or like a tour or something like that. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. But I was confused because obviously we always usually go through through Kinja's. He's like, no, I actually just want your like input into the show. I want you to do it. And I was like, oh, uh, okay. And obviously, you know, fast forward, we've had a lot of conversations, which got the blessing for. And I think naturally as Kinja's, we're always so supportive of one another in every endeavor, which is amazing because it's past business. Um, and just fam, you know what I mean? And I think Always. that's that's the stuff that matters. Um, so he gave me a call, asked me to, well, at first choreograph it. And I was like, oh, sure. And then <laughs> I think it was uh, Daryl, his manager, was like, do you actually like direct? Do you like creative direct? <laughs> <laughs> and this is also one of those moments yeah, where you're, you're like, just like, sure, I this do. Is, <laughs> this is the door. And, right, right. And, uh, and this is the first time I want to you... trick you, Daryl. I've done stuff before, <laughs> <laughs> but like to this caliber, it's just right. like, oh wow, this is amazing. Yeah, like, yeah. Here's the here's my chance. I'm like, yeah, right, let's do it. Right. And it was one of those moments where it's just like, okay, like I'm gonna learn a lot, and then right. just go in. You and stepped I know into I'm the fear. Kind of make yeah, yeah, yeah make mm-hmm. you know, or gain some hard lessons, but um ultimately like what we've created together is so special and um i think i think working and collaborating with jackson is it's so easy because he's you know he's a great guy he knows what he wants but he's also open to the collaboration of of making the show together so our very first conversations was in beverly hills he had like a house oh am i allowed to say that 
Whatever. Yeah, you don't give, you're not yeah. giving his address <laughs> yeah, away. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah, the address was. <laughs> uh, we were talking about the show, and you know, loosely, he would just kind of be like, "This is kind of what I'm looking for. We should do something like this." And then from there, it's just ping pong of like, "Oh, well, what if we do this?" Or and then he'd be like, "Oh, I want this moment in the show. Cool." And I think my my role in this was really just creating the story. And I think what has helped knowing Jackson for this long too is just seeing his life and his career and allowing that to be the uh the compass for the show and i don't want to give too much away because we still we're not even halfway through the tour i don't think we still have the u.s south america and china coming up but i think it reflects... which some of us are about to ask you for some la tickets by the way just fyi <laughs> hi my name bring is on, some bro. of us yeah. <laughs> bring it on dude uh just jump on stage <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, well, he's serious. <laughs> he's the creative director. I'm it seriously. <laughs> so, uh, just going back to the tour, even like putting it together was really making sense of it. And I think the 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 big thing I really want to talk about in the show is that like I think what's special about Jackson's show is it's his story and it's a very human one. And I think anyone can relate. You know, just like going through the ringers of your own inner demons, your own darkness and and finding your own voice and kind of embracing and taking the mantle on as as confident and as as an authentic you, you know, and I think he he relates that to the term of magic man is becoming your own magic man and finding that voice within yourself. So um, I think that and a bunch of spectacular things that happen in the show that we've kind of got to concoct together and collaborate on. Um, I'm really proud of it. And I think that it's not even just me and Jackson. There's a huge team that's involved uh, from the music director with Max to, you know, Plan A, which is the production company. And Troy, who's in China, who contributed a lot to the aesthetic as well. There's like a huge team that allowed it to make it happen. And it's continuing on. And if that's kind of like an indicator of what's, I guess, next for me is, is, is finishing out the tour. You know, mm -hmm. there's so many more places to experience it. And being um a witness to how it's already been received in like thailand uh malaysia in london and paris is just like it's really magical seeing people who are fans but also not fans like watch the show but be just totally blown away by mm. um just jackson you know as yeah. a performer he's a beast he's an incredible yeah. performer yeah you know what i mean so he's all right <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said uh, it. <laughs> um, question. So, what was uh, without you know spoilers or anything like that in whatever way that you deem fit? What is your favorite part of the show? Oh, and then okay. also for you personally, what was your uh, most memorable or favorite part of the process putting the show together? Damn. I'll start with favorite part of the show, unexpectedly so too, because I think that as a creator, you become attached to certain things for different reasons. Totally, yeah. But my favorite part of the show is when we created um, to drive you home, uh, which I think you actually got a chance to create too as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You oh, were yeah. helping me film on a cell phone outside your apartment that <laughs> that's night. That's right. Because, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's right. That's a whole other yeah. conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So many memories. Uh, crusade. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, I drive you home because uh, one of the... Uh, it's not at every show. It just is based on the production budget. But um, there's a part of the show where the stage comes up and it rotates uh, it's a rotating stage. It's like a square. And we got to create something really special um, that kind of told a story through that. But what I love about it is that it's actually not much dancing per se. Yeah, It's really a lot of storytelling and just moments that kind of make it beautiful. And, and I think what uh, I'm so used to, or we, I should say, as like the collegiate dance community that we come from, is just overloading stuff with so much content. You're like, oh my gosh, I was crazy. But I think with the magic with this one was just taking away. Taking away mm. until it felt stripped down enough to be like, I think it's ready to go. And I think that was one of my favorite parts of it. Dope. Um, what was it? In the, oh, favorite part of the creative process? For you, personally. <laughs> I think that... I think it's twofold. 
the first one is seeing it for the first time. Like, yeah. you know, you pour yourself and you pour your whole soul into something and then you see it in its culmination for the first time in like in a grand arena. You're like, holy crap, this is not just in my mind it is tangible (laughs) and it's real and it's happening you know and i think the second part of that was experiencing it truthfully with addy and carlo you know yeah yeah, because addy was my uh associate creative director and also a manager and carlo was my associate choreographer and i think that you know when you when you work so hard on something and I guess you just get to see it and experience it together in that space. And, and <laughs> you know, taking a photo together too, even with Jackson, like Kinja's, you know, it's just like, sick. it's powerful, that man. You know, it's just like, look what we're making and look what we're creating and the, and, and the scale of this stage to people who just, um, well, one, love music, love entertainment, but also just want to be moved, you know, by a great story. So I think that's, at least for now. I love movie. that. Yeah. Last year, last year was a big year for you, man. Um, you know, uh, just even as, just as a friend, being able to witness from afar, watching you undertake, you know, a world tour to like also going and working on like, you know, the Karate Kid and stuff. Um, to see, you know, seeing you obviously, you know, buying a home, having a kid, which is <laughs> crazy beyond measure. I can't even process that. You know, all the uh, the side work, like in between those things, you were. You were choreographed uh, some mini choreography for like different K-pop and like mm-hmm. T-pop artists and different stuff like that. You know, halfway through some of you guys' rehearsals with Jackson, me and you still had to get in the text to coordinate when this guy could go out and get his tattoo and adjusting <laughs> to that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. you had a wild and super inspiring year. Like I, I was, you know, I think well, thank you, uh, the rest of the kindred just being able to get a front row seat and just like you know watching one of our brothers just take off. Like I think. I think, needless to say, I think 2022 was a very, like, take-off year for you. You know no what word. I'm saying? Yeah. Thank you, man. How, like, did you see that no. for yourself like that? Or, <laughs> but in retrospect, you know, when you really yeah, think about well, it, like, do you, do you feel and understand, like, how your peers can see, you know, and just witness that amazing... Literally, like, like, you jumped on a trampoline and then we didn't see you again for, like, half a year. Because <laughs> that's how high you were able to go. And it was oh, amazing, word. you know mm-hmm. what I mean? But, like... How, did you see that for yourself? And then, like, also just, I guess, in general, like, I, I know this is super loaded and we're short on time, but, like, what's next for you, you know? Um, one, to answer your first question, no. <laughs> I didn't see it that way, but I appreciate that. Like, I think always in hindsight, you get a reflection of, like, what, um, or I guess how it's perceived in the moment if it was insane, you know, cause, um, uh, Gabra was pregnant most of last year and then just being like, I gotta provide, I gotta do this, you know, and just like running. It's almost like with blinders, just sprinting, just like vision, I just yeah. have to do this, you know, there's just no choice. Um, but I think that even just, I can't, I think that was actually a strength of it too, I guess it, when you're in the midst of it, it's just not allowing, outside noise to hinder your your speed of it and i think that that helped me and and i think the support from you guys and the brothers and the kinjas only accelerated me further it's almost like hands on my back like pushing me forward too and i think that's like just as powerful you know what i mean and um (laughs) i always talk to gabri about this whenever I guess tunnel vision is probably the best way to say this, but whenever I do get into something, <laughs> that's literally what happens. Like I'm just totally absorbed and obsessed by it. Mm. Good or bad, I don't know. But um, it's I think the it allowed way, dude. <laughs> it just allowed me to focus uh, focus on it, and um, I think the culmination of it and and the pressure of it is also because of my son. Like I want him to grow up and be proud, or even just look back and be cared for in a way that's both financially and also uh, from a passion perspective of chasing your dreams and knowing that I did everything I could, you know, to um, accelerate my career and, and my family, but also provide, you know. Yeah. Well, we know we're short on time and um, 
you're you're about to run to uh, another rehearsal or something. Not mine. It's actually Gabby's. Okay, it's rehearsal. Gabby's rehearsal. You know, <laughs> got to get you out of here. Um, so that's we're, freaking cool. <laughs> it, is, it is pretty freaking cool. You guys are killing it. I'm just a dad um, today, guys. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just watching the baby. Um, so we're we're gonna we're gonna skip our lightning round with you today, but we can't we can't oh, let you go. I think we we could do it. Can we do no, a quick one? Well, he just said it. I mean, yeah, yeah. all right. I don't want to get We're going to do trouble. a lightning round, Gab, if you want to come in. Good <laughs> answer. <laughs> all right, fine. We'll do a short, shorter one. We do, we do, we, we kind of go in, but we'll go shorter. All right, here we go. Lightning in three, two, one. Oh, snap. What is your favorite coffee place? Oh, man. Not right now because I can't go back. Onyx in Arkansas. Their Southern Weather Coffee is so good. And that's shout out to my homie wow. who, who brought me out. It's really good. I think they sell in LA too. But anyway, that's a long way to questions. Lightning round, go ahead. Who currently sleeps more, you or Gabri? Me. Oh, dude, obviously. <laughs> 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 She's got to feed a baby and, you know, she, they're biologically attached. For sure. What's your favorite piece out of the, the Jackson Wayne Magic Man tour that you've choreographed? Oh, uh, other than the Drive You Home one? Um, because it's really fun to watch and feel the energy of it. Oh man, it's a it's a toss up between Go Ghost and Blow. Hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. There's a, there's a lot of smoke in that Blow one. <laughs> when you <laughs> first found out uh, you were having a child, who was the first person you called, and how'd that call go? We actually kept it a secret for a while. Uh, we didn't call anyone. We. The first person we told were, um, God, who was it? I think the first person we told was my parents, maybe, in person. And we have like the videos for it too. But we kept it a secret for, you know, for a certain amount of weeks sure. because it's like volatile for and you sure. don't know if yeah, the yeah. baby's going to pull through or healthy, et cetera. So I think it was my parents and then her parents. What is one thing that you're looking forward to in this next year? I'm looking forward to connecting with y'all again. <laughs> and that's truthfully because last year was so crazy amidst the Magic Man World Tour and also just having a baby and now moving to San Diego. Um, this is <sighs> bubble wrapped answer, but I really value the connection that we have as friends and as family. And I think that that over everything is actually really important. Word. Love that. Don't say anything for like at least 10 more seconds. Let's just let that one sit in the heart. <laughs> let it sink in. That makes me so happy, man. You know what I mean? Dude, because past all this, man, like we're fam. You of know course, I mean? dude. You, mm -hmm. I miss you, man. Yeah, you know? bro. But Same. at the same time, it's like, you know, like I said, you know, it's also such a treat to witness you know, it's not like, man, where's he, dude? You know what I mean? It's <laughs> sure, like, yo, sure. this yeah. fool's flying, you and, know? And it's like we're following. You know, we're following the journey, That's what I'm you saying, know what I mean? And know? so, we're, we're, you know, we're rooting for you back here, you know Thank what I'm saying? Man. So, it's it's really cool. This is the stuff of substance that matters. It yeah, permeates absolutely. through the work. This is the core. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, So, if you were to fast forward in time, let's say you're 80 years old. And you can somehow travel back in time to talk to yourself now. What do you think the 80-year-old version of Ving would tell you the 34-year-old version right now? What do you 50-year-old Zenden in the corner? <laughs> <laughs> totally judging your answers. Uh, I'm just kidding. Take out that last one. Take out that I one. would assume that it would be uh, like relishing in every moment. And... Um, I think even just being, uh, what am I trying to say? Present in the moment with family um, more. And I think I have a great opportunity right now just because I do feel like this is an off season for me. But when it starts to break, pick up again, I think it's balancing this feeling of um, being present with my family and then also being able to like work. You know, it's gonna It's going to come and I feel the wave coming of finding it. It's good. Uh, this season, or starting from last season, we actually kind of uh, ended with a different question. We we got your golden role the first time that you were on the pod. So mm. uh, this 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 go around, we're entertaining the concept of mastery. Bruce Lee has his quote: "I fear not mm. the man who has practiced ten thousand kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick ten thousand times." Mm -hmm. uh, what is something that you feel like you've poured so many uh, hours, blood, sweat, and tears into that you feel like you've actually mastered? Whoa. Uh, 
I don't know about mastered, but at least in this chapter of my life, I've gotten much better hold of it is my uh, myself, actually, like self-control. I think that, and, and the only reason why I say that is because I think, well, now I'm 34, in, in my 20s, it's just like, not that I didn't have self-control, but you're just so like, oh, what's over here? I want to do this. Oh, no, no, no. What's over here, over here? But it's also just mastering I guess maybe there's a better way to say it is my focus. Because mm. I think I could say, the, sure, like dance, but I think that's a little bit more vague. I think on the more personal level, it's it's my focus and finding uh, purpose and then getting the steps to execute to get there. I actually see that in you. I like it's, <laughs> it's very evident. Like oh, I, thanks, I will just validate that. You can focus on it. I can focus you like on that? your focus. Wow. That was terrible. Oh, that was like on. a three out of ten, but it's okay. It's we try. Works. It still we works. try here. We've been drinking. <laughs> We've been drinking. Bing one, dude. Thank you for stopping by, man. It was a good hangout, dude. Like I, we were just like, should we just record for like thirty minutes and just hang out the rest? But I feel like we kind of accomplished all Both. of that in this sit down. Um, I think our conversation, well, it always does what it does. It, it'll go where our minds and our hearts are currently at, and 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 just seeing where you're at as a as a new father. Um, you know, uh, doing projects that, you know, were, were dream projects of yours that are now coming into fruition and reality, but also like you're freaking Ving, dude, you're our brother, you're our friend, you're somebody that we can always tap in with in, in the way that we always know we could pick up from, but like, dude, you are inspiring, dude. Like you really are like, mm -hmm. you're sure the people who are following and, and your fans and things like that, but you're inspiring your own crewmates, um and just the way that you are growing as a man um not only is it inspiring I, it's very refreshing and it's very like sobering too it's like yo man like that's what's up like i that my whole thing is like when i'm listening to you i'm like yes i'm i'm fully vibing with you man and mm -hmm. we know you have nothing but a bright future ahead of you can't wait to spend more time with you as you said you wanted to do in the next mm, you know year happen. like you know, hanging out and just just being friends and fam. Let's do that. And you got a beautiful, handsome little boy and and a beautiful wife. And and you're you're killing it right now, dude. Mm -hmm. And so, thank you for driving up here to spend some time with us and and just sitting of down course, and, and doing what we do. But uh, we love you, man. And and uh, it's it's really good to connect again. Thank you, bro. Inspiration is full circle, dude. Like, feel likewise. Thank she brings you. Enemy in here, Gab. <laughs> Gab. Maybe we should open the door. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Gab. Gab Ray. Oh, she's, she's sleeping. sleeping. Oh, oh. Okay. That was a sh oh, okay. Oh, okay. Never mind. Oh, I was you just going to show him. Oh, I was like, what is that sound? You got the noise canceling thing. Oh, his eyes are opening. Come here, son. His eyes are opening. Bring him in here. No? Never mind. It's okay. Hmm. Well, look at this. We, we got, got Mama Gabri. We, we got, got the reason. Baby Z. The reasons in the are in building the building right here. In the room. Yo. Here are the reasons. I need to get me one of these kids so I can start focusing better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, my God. This, this is, my is beautiful. This okay. Is beautiful. For anybody who's uh, obviously if, if uh, <laughs> jump on the YouTube so you can see some of this stuff. But. Uh, just to close this out, as we got family and love in here, uh, just to rehash on what Ben was saying too, what a treat it is, uh, not just for our fans, but for us. Like, I think these things like podcasts get to just be, at the end of the day, a time capsule. Mm -hmm. We're going to like look back on these like 5, 10, 20 years from now. And like fans, fans who follow this journey, they're going to like you know, see the first podcast that Ving was on. We're going to be talking about like projects that we're working on. They're going to see like later podcasts like this one where it's like, oh my God, like he's got a baby. He's like creative directing. <laughs> he just like moved like Gabby's in this. And then hopefully, you know, if we continue this journey in life in general, like, you know, the, maybe there's another podcast five, 10 years. And, and like, that's it. That's what this is about. You know, just like growth, life, doing what you love with the people that you love, finding success in what you love and stuff like that. And I, I think there's genuinely like no greater journey and glory than like what I'm fucking watching right now. I'm like <laughs> witnessing it. Dude, and that's is, funny thing because like as amazing. far as my life knows and my mentality, that's the end of the road so far. Like yeah. I don't I only have this, you know. <laughs> everything 
is through the just through the wire right now. I'm just peeking, and, and it's just a beautiful thing. Oh, so. you wait and see, bro. In a couple of years, a bunch of little us running around. <laughs> Part one. Oh my, oh my boy. I love it. I Apologies love it. to our wives in advance. You ready to meet Anthony's kid? <laughs> get out of here dude <laughs> <laughs> that's like season 12 of the podcast <laughs> but hey that being there. said you know uh, uh again thank you so much for coming out here thank your you baby is beautiful your whole freaking everything is amazing and, and, and just thanks for inspiring us still constantly love you guys straight yeah, up man. man well uh everyone follow ving man we'll plug his socials in in the description all that good stuff and uh you got to be better with your social media updates so you're, you're, you're <laughs> i know can know what's honestly going on. truthfully it's because all my videos and photos are of him oh, if that's just... what's going on that's <laughs> hey, what's going on people <laughs> yeah. respect the, the truth of the hustle absolutely <laughs> But folks, thank you so much for watching or tuning in. If you're finding this episode for the first time, we have many more episodes with amazing guests just like Ving that have graced the pod. Um, if you're really digging what we do, make sure you hop on iTunes or your podcast platform. Leave us a five-star rating. Write us a review. Follow us on our socials. Kinja's Podcast, Cast with a K. And uh, screenshot us. Let, us. let us know that you're listening. And uh, we appreciate you guys. We love y'all. See y'all next time. Peace out. Kids are bang, y'all.